Hi there, Link. <laughs> this is your new machine, and uh, I've just got her all back together, and she's running and sewing great. Um, and this is going to be your tutorial. It's so much like Lori's machine that uh, you probably already know all of this, but just in case, or if any of the kids want to sew on your machine, you'll be able to... Uh, uh, point them to this video and uh, and they'll be able to see how to wind the bobbin and thread the machine and all the other things that need to be done. So, um, without further ado, your bobbin case, just like on Lori's machine, is down below the throat plate. And uh, if you hold on to the little lever when you pull the bobbin case out, your bobbin can't drop out while you're moving it around. Uh, this bobbin is pretty full. Let's see if I have one that's less full that we can use for demonstration. Let me take off this old yellow thread. Lovely it is as it is. Makes you wonder what somebody was sewing in this color. Okay, this of course is your bobbin winder. And to wind the bobbin, put your spool on the spool pin that's down by the bobbin winder into the tension device here and then up to the bobbin. Put the thread through any one of the little holes in the side. And then hold on to the end of it as you get the little keeper pin aligned. Press it down and oh looks like uh, I'm gonna have to adjust that. Once you get a few wraps on there, you can cut off this little tag of thread. <clears throat> Declutch your machine by turning the chrome knob in the center of the hand wheel towards you a quarter of a turn or so until you feel it hit its stop. <clears throat> and then the uh, hand wheel is disengaged from the rest of the machine so it can wind your bobbin without making the machine cycle. There we go. As it fills, it's going to push this little lever up. And when it's all the way full, it's going to pop it loose and turn it off and stop winding the bottom. And uh, that's all we're going to put on for this test. Flip the lever up to release your bobbin, and with the thread coming off the top in this direction, drop the bobbin into the bobbin case, and direct the thread into the little slot on the side under the leaf spring until you feel it click into place. And then uh, you should have just enough tension on the bobbin case to be able to dangle the bobbin case without it unspooling. So this is a little bit more tension than it really needs. Let's see how that does. Just enough that you can dangle it without it unspooling. <clears throat> Holding the little lever on the side and with the finger pointing up. 
slip it into the bobbin race. Um, Reclutch your machine first and make sure your needle is up out of the needle hole because that will block this from going in. So slide it onto the spindle of the bobbin race until it uh, kind of clicks into place and the little finger goes into the cutout that's made for it. To wind the to thread the machine, put your spool on the spool pin, go into the slot on the top here in the back, go all the way around between the discs of the tension assembly until you pick up the notch at the top. And then going behind this little thin leaf spring, <clears throat> come up behind it and catch the leaf spring so that when you pull up on the thread it moves the uh, spring up and down. And then go through the take up lever on the back towards the front. And then into the thread guide on the face plate. thread guide on the needle clamp and then through the eye of the needle <clears throat> from the left towards the right towards the inside of the machine got a nice fresh end on it so it goes through the needle with no hang-ups you're not accidentally wrapped around anything you're not supposed to be <coughs> excuse me then holding your upper thread loosely turn the hand wheel toward you one full revolution and the needle will take the thread down where the hook will pick it up wrap it around the bobbin and bring up your lower thread there it is lower thread your thread between the toes of the presser foot towards the back of the machine and you're ready to sew. <clears throat> Put your fabric under the presser foot and lower the presser foot using the lever on the back there. Hold your thread for the first stitch or two. <clears throat> good it's nice well balanced on the top and the bottom and make the stitch a little bit longer stitch all the way at the bottom this is your stitch length <clears throat> zero is where the uh, fabric doesn't move in either direction going down from zero the further down you go the longer your stitches get from tiny up near the zero to your longest stitches all the way at the bottom. From the zero going up, your stitches get longer and longer in reverse. So, This adjustment here, <coughs> excuse me, um, when you choose the stitch length you want, and it's you'll see the number in the uh, in the window here as you well you loosen this knob, then you can move it up and down, and that moves this dial. Um, 
choose your stitch length. In this case, I'm going to choose 15 stitches per inch and tighten down the little thumb screw there. Now, when you sew in forward, <coughs> sewing 15 stitches per inch and when you go into reverse so if your stitches in reverse will be the same length 15 stitches per inch but in reverse for the most part I just leave this all the way wide open um, let's see this is your feed drop if you ever want to do machine embroidery or um, just draw pictures or do any darning or patching. <clears throat> Excuse me. Turn this knob all the way in the clockwise direction. It's about a quarter turn to where it says down. And now <clears throat> the teeth of the feed dogs are not going to come up high enough to grab the fabric and move it. Also, this is your the pressure on your sewing foot. If you're going to uh, do darning or patching or anything like that, press that little lever down and it pops up and takes all the pressure off your sewing foot. And now you are the one moving the fabric. You can write words or draw flowers or whatever you want. Uh, and then when you're ready to sew again, push it down roughly halfway. That's uh, the ballpark uh, pressure for most fabric. For a real heavy fabric, you may need a little more pressure. For a real delicate fabric, you may want to cut that off and just push it down a little ways. Just enough so that the machine moves the fabric along with authority, but the teeth are not biting hard into your fabric. So, push that down about halfway, turn this knob back to the up position. <coughs> now the machine is moving the fabric. Um, I don't think that oiled the fob winder, so let's do that. And I guess that's about it. Oh, your tension. <coughs> this is your your thread upper thread tension. And uh, I usually set it so that um, it's at about three. Uh, you want to set it about three for regular fabric. A little lower for delicate fabric, a little higher for heavy fabric. But basically, <clears throat> right around three is uh, good for average uh, fabric. That's about it. Uh, every, uh, depending how often you use it, uh, once a month or so, go through and uh, uh, oil your machine. Um, you want to take off your face plate. It's just a matter of loosening up this screw and then it slides up into the keyhole and off. And you'll be able to uh, see what all the movement points are as you turn the hand wheel. You'll see where everything pivots or slides or uh, moves against another piece of metal. In each of those places will get one drop of oil. Tip your machine back and you'll see all of the places underneath that the uh, that move against each other as you uh, cycle the machine and each of those spots will get one drop of sewing machine oil um, I'll find you a user manual that will work for this machine and uh, it'll also have an oiling guide in it but each each of those spots will get one drop of oil <coughs> and 
in here uh, in the race where the uh, your hook spins around the bobbin uh, you're gonna want one drop of oil uh, let's see <clears throat> Inside the back, same thing, take off your uh, back plate and cycle the machine, look in there and see what uh, what touches other stuff as it moves <clears throat> and oil those spots. Your motor will get one drop of oil at each end of the motor. There's a little red uh, circle around the oil hole. Uh, makes it easier to find. That's about it. Uh, when you oil the machine, also um, take out these two screws and lift off the plate there and brush out the uh, dust and lint around your uh, around the teeth of the feed dogs because the uh, um, thread dust and uh, lint is actually abrasive and uh, it will wear on your machine if you don't uh, clean it out once in a while. That's about it. This is a real nice little Japanese straight stitch machine. <clears throat> and when you get ready, uh, if someday you decide you want to uh, uh, do some more fancy things that require maybe a zigzag stitch or uh, even some of the other uh, um, decorative and utility stitches, uh, we'll look at another model machine that uh, uh, will do more. But this, this machine will do just about anything that you want to sew. Um, this is what they used to make uh, suits and wedding dresses and everything else on back before they figured out how to do zigzag and other stuff. So this will do uh, pretty much anything. And uh, <clears throat> if you, uh, excuse me, I've uh, uh, had a flu or something recently and I'm still just a little bit congested, pretty much over it, but it's kind of been annoying. Um, yeah, that's it. I look forward to uh, getting your machine to you and I will find a nice table that it'll fit into and... Uh, yeah, that's about it. All right. See you soon. Um, it just occurred to me that uh, after I put the machine together, I had not yet oiled it. So this is a good opportunity for us to go over that oil in the machine. Face plate comes off uh, by loosening the screw. Pull the bottom out just a little bit so it's loose and then slide it up and it'll slide right off that screw. going to put a drop of oil. You can see that there's a tiny oil hole here. So put a drop of oil there. There's a movement point here. There's a movement point here. And there's probably a little oil up, oil hole up there too. I can't really see it from this angle. Um, oh, and there's an oil hole at this movement point too. <clears throat> but as you turn your machine, you can see what moves, what slides, what rotates. This uh, take-up lever, you can see it going up and down. It's got a little bearing on it that's riding in a slot on the uh, on that big um, flywheel thing there. So you want to put a drop of oil in that slot. 
that fairy to ride on. One, one drop of oil here. drop of oil here one drop of oil here <coughs> and if you look at the top of the machine You'll see that there's an oil hole here, an oil hole here, and an oil hole here. Those are convenient ways to reach that slot in the big flywheel there. And I think that reaches the same spot. This must be for the, uh, the bearing that rides in that slot. <clears throat> this one's an important one. This is your main bearing you put a drop of oil in that oil hole <clears throat> and there's another one back here turn it turn the hand wheel until you can see the little cup thing come to the top inside put a drop of oil in that put one drop of oil in this little oil hole here that oils the rear bearing <clears throat> we already of course put it drop in the bobbin winder and I'm going to put a drop in the back here not something I usually worry much about that's uh, where the uh, bobbin winder pivots up and down <clears throat> around to the back and take off. Turn that off. Take off this little thumb screw and the cover plate is there and also your light is attached in the same spot. <clears throat> Flashlight will help you to see in there uh, what needs to be oiled but as you as you turn it you can see what what moves this little cup thing here uh, we already oiled from the top but I'd like to put another drop right back where the uh, shaft goes into the body of the machine um, there's a slide that goes up and down here and there's a place where it pivots right here And there's a place where the uh, the shaft is kind of offset, and so when it uh, as it turns, it moves this fork back and forth. So we're going to put a drop of oil between the uh, ends of the fork there. You can see here where the uh, take up lever pivots and this is what we oiled through that oil hole at the top here this other oil hole oiled the uh, the groove that this uh, bearing on the takeoff lever rides in Oil holes on the motor are there and there.
just one drop. You don't want to put too much oil in the motor or, or it will smoke and stink. Put this back on. machine around so we can tip it back and reach all the oiling points underneath. As you cycle it you'll see what moves and what turns and what pivots and uh, we're going to put a drop of oil at each of those spots. A drop of oil here and these little needle uh, pivot points, it's a little needle that goes into a cup. Uh, so it's just very point in the needle touching this thing here. So it rotates real easily. But yeah, that little needle needs a drop of oil. Uh, here in this fork, put a drop of oil in there. In this shaft, there's an oil hole that's easy to see. Here, there's a bearing that goes up and down in this fork here. Those are all the points that we just oiled. <coughs> Excuse me. Drop of oil here. Drop of oil at this needle point. Drop of oil at the other end of it here. And then very important and easy to miss back here there are two more of those little needle pivots there's a drop of oil the other end of this shaft here you can see it's got another oil hole here the shaft here with both ends has a needle pivot extra drop right here where the uh, um, where the hook pivots <clears throat> and right here remember we did the feed drop knob at the top uh, when you turn the uh, knob for the feed drop you're going to see it pull out this little pin here and now the feed can uh, Gravity will make it drop, but um, you can see where it pivots, and that of course needs a drop of oil there. And there's behind it, there's a fork with a uh, an eccentric in it that needs a drop of oil. It, it'll be easier for you to tell when you're actually sitting in front of the machine looking. And see what moves and therefore needs oil but this uh, this is your your feed drop you can see it move when I pull the pin out push the pin back in if I turn the knob to the up position pushes that in and pushes the uh, uh, holds the uh, feed dogs up in place <clears throat> So basically that's it. Let's see if it sounds any better. It's a little noisy without oil. Um, you don't want to run your machine with the uh, with the uh, presser foot down on top of the feed dogs because they're scraping away at the bottom of the feed dog all that time. So <clears throat> you can either raise the foot or drop the feed and now you can run the machine without scraping up the bottom of your presser foot. Oh, doesn't that sound better already? It's going to go around. It's a lot of difference. Nice 
sew machine. <coughs> yeah, you can make a pair of Levi's with this thing. Sew some moccasins. Make baby blankets, whatever. Okay. Well, that's about it. Uh, if you have any other questions at all, um, we can talk about it when I'm there. And uh, Nothing else comes to mind that uh, would need any explaining. So, uh, again, we'll see you soon. Looking forward to it. Um, We'll, uh, we'll make contact and pick a good time for me to uh, bring this on out to you. All right. Bye-bye.